to fire right up with a, a veritable cornucopia of news you can use. Uh, we got several things that we're going to uh, discuss today, but all of it economically and uh, mortgage rate related. Uh, first of all, you're starting to see if you watch the news and if anybody's watching the news, they know that the markets have been tanking the last few days, um, as well as crypto. It's all starting to, to fall. Uh, a lot of these tech companies have lost a tremendous amount of their worth uh, in, just in yesterday's session, uh, but uh, going back even into last week. So we'll see what happens. Why, why is the market dropping? Well, primarily what I'm reading, uh, what I'm seeing talking to people, it has to do with they're worried about the, the stock market, stock owners, the people who buy and sell stocks are worried about the global economy, uh, what's going on worldwide, not just here in the United States. They're worried that uh, we're in for a global recession of some kind. Some areas are already in it now. Some areas are still acting as if they can continue to walk on clouds and nothing will happen to them. So, uh, but that's primarily the, the number one reason that I'm seeing uh, out there. Now, inflation is interesting because uh, you we're starting to see camps go two different directions. One of them, the, the hawks versus the doves. One of them is that inflation is being tamed by these interest rate increases that the Fed's doing and some of the other steps that uh, are happening. The other side is saying, uh, and, and primarily this is even the Fed, is saying things like, we're not getting it under control. We've got to raise interest rates faster. Uh, it's got to be worse. And yes, we now will have to probably create a recession, an artificially created recession uh, in order to tame inflation. Um, you know, so I, I don't know how that's going to come out, but it's interesting when you watch these two camps have diverged. Everybody was, you know, bad. Inflation is bad. We got to raise interest rates and all that. Now we're going boom, boom. So we've done too much and we've not done enough. Um, there was always a little bit of that, but literally it's it's uh, dividing into, you know, halves at this point. So we'll see what happens on that. We'll keep you up to, to news, but uh, there is no change at this point. There's no signals from the Fed that they're going to let up on the increased interest rates. Uh, and in, and that leads us into our next topic. Mortgage rates yesterday hit 5.64. Uh, remember, we were a little less than a year ago, June of last year, so 10 months ago, 11 months ago, we were at 2.61 was the low. Uh, we're at 5.64. Uh, that's 140% increase from where we were. That is definitely having an effect on the buyers that are out there. We, we hadn't seen a lot of change in the buyer profile up to say the last end of last month because a lot of those people who closed purchases last month had been qualified in say February at a lower interest rate. Uh, and now we're, we're having that problem, like I said, with uh, people getting stuck with higher rates of mortgage interest, uh, interest rate mortgage, and it's going to affect their ability to buy, uh, not only from a qualification standpoint, in other words, they can't get as much house as they could have gotten before because they can't qualify, uh, but also from just a pure payment standpoint, it's getting beyond the reach of many homeowners that want to be homeowners to be able to afford those payments that are going to be required when you have a darn near 6% interest rate. Uh, so, you know, what, what happens? What do we do? Well, it's two things that are going on out there right now. One is lenders are reintroducing an ARM-based product, an ARM, Adjustable Rate Mortgage. Uh, that's the thing that got us primarily, in my opinion, into trouble in 2006, 7, and 8. Uh, they were offering these teaser rates mortgage, and you could get a loan for, you know, the bag, bag of popcorn type price, and it would reset after three years and it would go to some ridiculous numbers. They have reintroduced that kind of product and they're starting to do that, sell that now to get people in. Uh, that does two things, in my opinion. Uh, it keeps prices on houses artificially high, which I don't believe there's value between some of the, uh, behind some of the prices that we're seeing in some of these markets out there. Um, and it puts these people in a kind of a la-la land position, the buyers, thinking they can really afford something they can't afford. Uh, it's an artificial thing. And I think you're going to see more and more lenders push for that type of product. And they'll have excuses. One of the ones I heard last week, yeah, but we qualify them as if it was a regular 6% interest, you know, even though they're only paying two on this buy-down thing. Uh, I've seen that happen a couple times in my career, and both times uh, these guys ended up flying right against the windshield. 
like a bug is splatting themselves. I think that's going to happen again. Um, homes for sale, number of homes for sale are up uh, in the last 30 days. Um, and prices are down in the last 30 days. Now, as a realistic effect, what's going on in our housing businesses, I can tell you uh, from Brandy's standpoint and from my other team's standpoint, we're getting a lot more potential sellers of houses than we were getting before. Uh, something like four times as many as we were two months ago for the same dollar spent. Uh, it, it literally has gotten, in some cases, to the point where there are so many sellers that we can't call back that we just have to, you know, we can't go to talk to all of them. There are, they're coming out of the woodwork, in my opinion. Um, I, and I think this is the early signs of what everybody else will see this summer. But we are literally, uh, one of the campaigns that, um, for one of my housing businesses, we ran a, a postcard campaign, uh, direct direct to these, we targeted certain uh, sellers in certain areas and we, we predicated it on, these are people who are gonna have financial problems. So we ran this matrix and we determined, here's a list of, I think it was around 10 or 11,000 uh, that we mailed to. We had, uh, and the way that we work on that team is we have them, the, the next step is to have them call an answering service, Pat Live, Call Porter, that kind of thing, and get interviewed. And then the acquisitionist will call them back. Uh, and so we only talk, we only call back folks that are fully qualified. In other words, they've been interviewed or screened for 10 minutes by Call Porter and or Pat Live, and they they've answered all the questions. And then it goes to our acquisitionist, and then we call them back. We had out of one mailing last month, we had 252 sellers go through the entire process, raise their hand, and say, "Yes, I want to sell my house." Um, that's a two, about a two and a half percent uh, take rate. And that's astronomical. Two months ago, you'd be lucky to get eight tenths of 1%. So this is three times as many sellers are qualifying themselves uh, and raising their hand and giving out enough information to say, yes, I want to sell. But you can't call 252 sellers. Uh, I mean, it's just too many. One person can't stay on top of that. Even if you talk to... 10 a day, it takes you 25 days to get through, uh, you know, that number. And by then your next mailing is going out if you're doing mailings once a month in marketing. And we're seeing the same thing over on Brandy's side on the Facebook thing. We're getting, you know, an average of four sellers a day versus one that we had a couple of months ago. So it's crazy. Uh, there are, in spite of what some real estate folks will tell you out there, uh, in my opinion, you're seeing the rats leave the sinking ship. And, uh, you know, it's reflecting itself in calls. Sellers who are raising their hands saying, yes, I want to sell. So we will keep you guys up to date on, as always, on what's going on. But I think you're going to see uh, buying product, buying houses a lot easier to do. Uh, selling a lot harder to do. And the profitability, we're in that unique window that we've talked about in the past. We're in that unique window when you can potentially buy right and sell right and, and make a ton of money. And I don't think these, these windows last long. The last one I saw was probably 2006. I think we're in one right now. It could last a year, could last six months, could last 18 months. It's unknown. It just depends on you know a lot of other things and what's going on out there. But I would definitely keep my eyes and ears open. And uh, you know, now is a good time to be in the market of buying and selling houses. Um, you know, in terms of the ways to do it, there's there's always you know the the ability to do uh, seller finance type product. But in my opinion, it's a good time right now if you are so inclined to do rehab projects. And although materials are expensive. Um, if you've got the ability to, you know, get a rehab done at a decent price, uh, keep in mind, a lot of these projects, when we get done rehabbing them, they don't need to be the Taj Mahal beauty wise. They just need to look fresh and clean and new. And if you can achieve that, you can make some really good money. You guys listened to my story last week about a house that we did in, I think it was Wisconsin, um, that was on the market for a day. And, you know, we had three offers and took one of them and we, we did nothing except a deep clean and patching some holes and painting over the patch. 
And, uh, you know, we were able to, to get above asking price, which you will still see in some markets, not all, um, you know, where there's a, a big demand. Don't look for that to happen in some of these other areas like San Francisco or New York City, because I don't believe that that's happening anymore where you're getting multiple offers above the ask price. But in some of these other markets uh, where people want to move to, you're going to see that. All right. That